Hey everybody, I'm Dave Chichi Mori. I'm the Natural History Curator here at the South Carolina State Museum. Welcome to Fossil Friday. Today we're going to talk about leatherback sea turtles. So leatherback sea turtles are the biggest turtle in the world's oceans. They're sea turtles, so they spend most of their life in the water, and they come up on the land to lay their eggs. And they're unique animals in many different ways, but one of them is in the shape of their shell. So unlike a modern snapping turtle, like this guy here, which has a shell that's made up of lots of different pieces, there's a row of bones down the center, and then there's another row on the side, and then they have a perimeter of bones along that that kind of connects everything together. Like that is a loggerhead sea turtle, which is actually a state reptile of South Carolina. They have a bunch of different bones, just like this, that forms the side of the shell. They do occur on the beach because loggerheads come up to lay their eggs. It is, uh, because they're federally protected, we're not allowed to collect their bones and keep them for our collections, except for here, at the museum, we do have permits to do that. But, in contrast, a leatherback has lots and lots and lots and lots of different pieces to the shell. Lots of little many-sided, six-sided, eight-sided, ten-sided pieces that are like a giant puzzle. And this particular guy here, when it was found, it was in an active construction site. So the bones had been disturbed and pulled out of the ground by the construction equipment. So the museum staff that went down to collect it back then we're able just enough time to kind of scoop it all up and put it in the boxes and bring it back to the museum. So when I got a hold of it a few years ago, that's how I found it was boxes of bones in the storage area. So I took all those pieces, brought them back down here into our prep lab, and slowly started to put it back together to what you see here. So part of what I had to do was take each individual piece and clean it up so that I had nice clean edges so that all the pieces went back together. And what we ended up finding was that even though you have lots of different pieces in the shell, those pieces broke into smaller pieces. So if we look right here, you can see a small collection of broken parts that I have to try and figure out how they go together with each other. So like this piece right here, we've got one, two, three different parts that go together to form this one whole bone. And then this one whole bone fits somewhere in here. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, that's part of one of the things I'm still working on. I found that as I'm putting it back together, it's easier for me to put it together upside down. So that's how you're looking at it right now. So you're not looking at the top side of the shell, like this piece here. You're looking at the underside. So if I flip this one over, then you can see that it sort of blends in with everything else. And to me, putting it back together, it's easier to look at this bland landscape where it all seems to be about the same color because when you look at these from the top side, some of them are white, some of them are purple. Some of the pieces, if there's three or four or five different parts to one bone, one piece is purple, one piece is brown, one piece is blue. So it makes it harder because you want to try and put colors that are the same together, and they don't always go that way. So to me, it's easier just to kind of go like this. And it's like if you take a thousand piece puzzle and you cut half of those into smaller pieces, throw it all back together and mix it up, and then take probably half of those out, and then try and put that back together with the plain cardboard side up without a box. That's kind of what we're doing here. So it's time consuming, but it's important to do because usually when we find a fossil leather back, you usually find just that single bone because when they die, all the parts seem to just get jumbled up and maybe bottom currents scatter them or something comes along and you know bites onto it and scavenges it and takes part of it away. So to find something like this where you have actually a lot of the shell is pretty important. And we can learn a lot from that. And so after a few years maybe of putting this back together, we have probably about 45% of a shell. And it may not sound like a lot, but this is one of the most complete leatherback shells from this time period that we've got, certainly in South Carolina. And what's neat about it is that if you look, you can see these little white tags I've got on here. Those indicate, you'd see them better if this was right side up, but since it's upside down, this is showing you where there are ridges on the shell. So a modern leatherback sea turtle has ridges on its back, and this guy had at least one row right down the center. The bones in the shell are the thickest right down the center of the back. And then it had another row, two rows, on both sides probably. So if I move back over to this side and just point right here, even though I don't have a line right there, these bones are about the same size as the bones over here that do have a ridge. So I think that there's a ridge here and probably there's another ridge over there. 
So that's a total of five ridges. We're probably getting closer to the edge of the shell where the bones are getting smaller and thinner, but we don't exactly know. Uh, we really don't have much to compare it with, but that's what we think. So that the bones are thickest in the center, they thin towards the ends. And so comparing this to another leatherback that we have in the collection that's actually about four million years older, that specimen came from Somerville, and we were able to dig that up and maintain the integrity of the shell, as in the piece that it was in, which was one large mass. We made a protective shell called a jacket and brought it back in one piece, and we're able to prepare it so that you could see all the individual parts together and not have to spend the two years like I did putting this back together. So this is actually a little bit different than that older turtle. We have another one on display, so the next time you come to the museum and you see our fossil whale skull on display, right next to it, it's not a whole lot to look at, it's in two pieces, but you'll know it because it's got little white outlines, and those are the outlines of all the individual bones, and that's to the right of the whale's skull. That's our oldest leatherback that we have in South Carolina, that's around 37 million years old. The fossil record for leatherbacks actually goes back to the Cretaceous, toward the end of the age of dinosaurs. So if dinosaurs are walking around on dry land, the ancestors to these and modern leatherbacks were swimming around in the world's oceans, so they've been around for a long time. So modern leatherbacks are a little bit different in that their bones and the shells are a little bit thinner. These guys are really thick and we're not quite sure why that is. So there's a lot to learn about these guys. Again, when you usually find them it's a single piece, so to have this as much of it is, even though it's not the whole thing, it's still a lot. One of the things that we found with this guy is that there's a fragment of one of the shell bones that I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it. But right here, and I'll just kind of point to it, you'll have to take my word for it, is there's a tip of a large shark tooth stuck in there. And so if I can figure out where this piece goes in here, I might find some other bite marks. So this particular shark, called Carcharocles angustidens, bit down on this turtle. Whether it was attacking the turtle to kill it and eat it, or if the turtle was dead and the shark scavenged it, we have no idea. But that gives you a little bit of an idea of how these animals interacted with each other back when this turtle was alive 24 and a half million years ago. So hopefully, when I flip this back over, I'll figure out where this goes and maybe we'll find more bite marks or more teeth embedded in the bone. And that gives us a little bit more of the paleobiology of these kinds of animals here. So that's about it for this particular guy. Maybe in another couple of months, couple of years, I'll have it all wrapped up and everything that we've got here on the table will be all one big piece. So join us for Fossil Friday in the future. Maybe we'll have an update, but if not, we'll certainly have some other things to talk about. Thanks for joining us.